Remember to breathe, cause it'll take your breath away When the engines cough and you blast off Ignite the night with a firecracker flash Remember to live Hello, I'm AxelMC131 and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. I'm just gonna warp to the next morning. It has been a little while since I was last in this save, uh, and that's because I've had a lot going on the last week. I think I recorded episode 11 at the, what, like the uh, end of February? It's now the 11th of March. Um, and there's a couple of reasons for that. One is that I've started university, and that's been taking up an awful lot of my spare time. So, there you know something about me. I'm at university at the moment, uh, and if you really care, I'm doing a Bachelor of Engineering. But uh, we are going to go to the uh, mission control at the moment and just catch up on our contracts that we have. Quiet, bird! I'll uh, we'll let the bird tweet away. Right, so these are the contracts that we have, mainly from ones that we collected at the end of last episode, and there are two of them that I want to complete in this uh, in this episode, and that is these two. Uh, positioning a satellite in a specific orbit and rescuing a Kerbal from orbit. And I'm going to do them in this order, so this one first and then this one for a special reason, and that is that I'm going to use the satellite uh, as kind of a, a little bit of espionage, as it were, a bit of recon reconnaissance. Uh, so we're going to uh, f try and fly the satellite past the, uh, um, the wreckage. So uh, I have uh, two vehicles already made for, the, for these missions. Um, so I'm stopping doing like the um, the time lapse builds, but I'm just going to try and line up um, where we want this to be, which is that we want Jana's scrap here. Here's the KSC here to be about here for a rendezvous. She's in like an 80, yeah, 88 by like 86 or something. But we want it, her to be about there for the rendezvous. So let's just time warp a little bit. Do 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 do. do. Uh, that'll do. We can probably match up from there. We're not doing a proper rendezvous, we just need to get close enough to see. Because I want to see what state she's in. This is not something that I've ever really cared about before, but I'm just curious, and I think that we can do it. And there's no reason why not to. So, we're going to go to the launch pad, and um, let it load up. And down here somewhere, we have the Observer 1 for Rockomax. And even though there's actually no flag on this, I'm going to make the mission flag Rockomax's flag if I can. Uh, chances are I'll never remember to do this again, but there we go, Rocket Max, and uh, you'll be able to see the Observer 1. Now this is a stupidly powerful launch vehicle, because it is once again on the Intrepid 1, and the thing weighs about 0.5 of a ton, <laughs> so we're basically going for the Longbow 2 approach here, which is same launch vehicle, very, very light spacecraft. However, we're going to be using a modded part today. Yay! Using one of my own, um, very own modded parts, and that is the Mayfly uh, thruster which is hiding under here somewhere, if you can... Uh, let's see if we can get a good view of it. Eh. Nope, this isn't going to work. Oh, we're inside it now. Here we go. Yeah, so that's just sitting in the middle there. Oh, I'm messing around with the camera. Okay. So, yes, I think we will try and get ready to go before Jana goes too far across, so let's get ready to go in three, two, one. And that will actually do, I think. We've managed to get a separation of about two kilometers at this point, which is close enough that we should be able to switch vessels and just look at Jonah's scrap from that point of view, and then we'll carry on to orbit. So where are we now? 66 kilometers. I think it's time to ditch that fairing. Thump! And now you can get a much better view of the satellite itself. So it's basically just a probe core, uh, two of the little Oscar B fuel tanks with solar panels around them, uh, reaction wheel, battery, and we've also got a press mat barometer and a thermometer underneath here. Okay, let us... I'm wondering if we need to actually start burning early, though, which is going to be a problem. Alright, where's our apparatus? We are in space, so let me just see how long an orbital insertion here is going to take. Yep. It's going to be a th like a 40 second burn. Alright, which means we want to burn 20 seconds before. I'm not 
not entirely sure where that is, but let's just prep for it anyway. It's actually probably going to drop down once we run a fuel in this stage. We actually still got quite a bit of fuel in this. Dang. <laughs> Doing pretty well. Okay. Let us just... We'll get to about 30 seconds, I think. Because the Mayfly does not have a huge amount of thrust. I think it's 8 kilonewtons I set it to. Which is less than the Spark, but more than the Ant. Okay, let's just time warp a little bit. And we'll go 25 seconds. Okay, start to burn. Okay, it's going to take 20 seconds now. I'm a little bit ahead. Damn, I was hoping to get closer than this. Let's just remove that. Oh, I want to be in orbit cam, not other thing. Oh, that's stage burnout. Wow, that got us really far. Okay, and now you can see the Mayfly, and it is literally just a tiny vector. That's it. And yes, apparently we have exhaust damage. That was the uh, separatron, the uh, separatron, the decoupler. But yeah, max thrust, eight kilonewtons, 330 seconds ISP, uh, which is pretty damn good. Okay, let's just keep uh, burning here. And will that bring that down? Yes, it will. Slowly. Come on, we can get closer than this. We're actually getting a, like over one g of thrust, which is pretty impressive from this. Like 11 meters per second per second. Okay. Oh. Come on. Hmm. How can I get closer? Well, at this point, we might as well just brute force, because we're going to just fly past anyway. So, if you ever wanted to know how to do rendezvous, without bothering to go into the details of docking, we're just going to go into target cam. And all you have to... It's all a matter of lining up nodes. Oh, wow. I, there's a lot of talk on this. <laughs> this reaction wheel is so overpowered for its size, but the one built into it is just not powerful enough. Alright, so we're going to try and angle it this way. Where's our vectors now? There we go. Okay, so it's all a matter of lining up like the retrograde marker with the uh, pointing away from target, which you do by just burning in a direction, and the retrograde marker will always move away from the direction you're pointing. And then if you flip over to the other side, you'll see that they are... There we go. They're pointing in the same direction. I explained that really badly, but by now we've got a separation of yeah, 0.2 kilometers over here. We are in space, right? Yeah, we're actually in a stable orbit, so that's pretty good. That's 200 meters. So I think that we will uh, time warp around to there, just so that we can get a good look. Okay, we're now within 700 meters. That was pretty quick, actually. Right, where is it? Oh, I saw it flash past over there. So let's just switch over. Ah, she's in one of the crew cabins. Alright, well, I don't know what you're doing in there. But, um, know that help is on the way. Jonah Kerman, who I believe is, uh, what is she? She's an engineer. Ah, okay. That will be a welcome addition to our team. But, um, we will have a rescue mission up on your way shortly. Not yet, I'm afraid, but shortly. Okay. So, with that out of the way, I'm just going to uh, unset her as a target and get ready to go into this orbit. So, that's our apoapse, that's our periapse. So, this I'm going to do with nodes. Okay, we're well, one minute out. This is actually quite nice because we're burning near periapse, which is actually quite low, so we should be getting some O-Birth effect here. Okay, uh, let's just... Uh, we're going to do a full burn at 40 seconds, I think, just to see if that's actually how long it's going to take. 46, 45, 44, 43, 42... Oh, let's go for it. Yeah, about a minute. So I think that I'll let it go till 30 seconds. And then we should be able to follow through with that. We should have fuel for this. I know that the... I think I calculated that this vehicle... Okay, let's throttle up. Should have about somewhere in the order of 2 kilometers per second of Delta V. Which is actually pretty intense. Um, I don't think the engine is overpowered. Because it's not actually as efficient as like the, uh, the Terrier. The LV-909. And it doesn't put out a huge amount of thrust. Okay. Let us... Now let's just watch this 
extend outwards. Alright, we're coming up on the orbit now, and kill the engine, and we'll do the rest of this very precisely. So what is it? 4914 periaps, which is this. So I want to get this up to 4914 or thereabouts. Actually, let's just get rid of that node, because it's in the way. 48, whoop, 49, whoop! Okay, that's a little bit over, but that's pretty close. And I think that that's, like, within the margin of error, because it does give you a little leeway. It doesn't have to be exact. But we're on our way. So, uh, yeah. Oh yeah, and the mission parameter does actually require to have a th thermometer on the satellite, but I have that, so. Right, let's just turn this thing back around so we get some solar power. And set up a node at the opposite end. Alright, here we are. Apparently this is going to be a 20 second burn. Mm, I can dig that. Okay, so let us get ready to go. Pointing the right way? Yep. Still got plenty of power, still got plenty of fuel. Ah, Kerbin, it's so pretty. Okay, I like how we've got the uh, Kerbin and the Moon on the other side. Alright, uh, let's just take a little screenshot, why not? The light's terrible, actually, so I might leave it for later to do a screenshot. Okay, let's get ready to burn in about five seconds. And we'll just go out to here so I can see what the orbit's doing. And burn. Okay, that's good. Looking pretty good. Uh, the Mayfield, by the way, does not have a gimbal on it, so that's uh, or an alternator, so I'm hoping that that's another thing that balances it. Uh, feel free to tell me if you think it's balanced or not. Okay, there goes our Apple Apps. What places with the Perry Apps going out? And whoop! Okay, let's get rid of that node. Is that un in the... Yep, that's the desired orbit, apparently, within marginal deviation. So give it a few seconds. And... <gasps> Ding! Contract complete. Yay. What a lot of funds. Uh, oh. What? <laughs> Rescue Janicorn from Orbit of, Orbit of Kern. Well, I haven't done that. She's part of the space program crew, but I haven't recovered her. Um, oh, we've performed a ron rendezvous maneuver around Kerbin. Oh, awesome. That's, a, of course, now a milestone rather than uh, a contract that you fulfill. All right, well, let's just uh, rotate this thing so that the sun... Solar panels, turn the engine off. Yeah, we've still got plenty of fuel, so if we ever want to do anything else with this, we can. Uh, let us extend this aerial. See if we've got any science we can do. Nope. And nope. But if we ever need science from high over Kerbin, then we can. That's quite pretty. Take some pretty screenshots. So pretty. It, it's quite funny because the Mayflower is supposed to be like a small-scale engine. It looks huge on this thing. <laughs> really didn't need something that big. I probably could have gotten away with like the ant, but I just like this one. I like using um, parts that I've made. It's quite it's quite fulfilling. I mean that's that's like the other half of the game, you know. I'm rambling. I'm rambling. Let's go back to the space center. We have one mission complete. <laughs> But now we have a uh, second mission that we need to do, and that is rescuing Jana Kerman. Even though apparently we've already done that. We've just, like, said hi with a probe. <laughs> we haven't actually rescued her. But we actually have 26 more science and s almost 800,000 funds, and it's night again. Typical. Right, let's go to the tracking station. And we'll time walk around to who Jana is in an appropriate position, which she almost is. That's quite good, actually. Ba 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 ba, ba 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 ba, do do do, to there. Okay, go back and put something else on the launch pad. Something that I actually I thought about quite carefully while I was building it, more carefully than I usually do for my like rescue missions and stuff. 
which basically corresponds to, I think, one serious difference to a lot of other ones. Let's just make sure Jeb is not on board. I have actually had Jeb try and get on board bef um, my rescue missions before. Not in this save, in previous saves. And that's just so frustrating. But um, here we go. So you'll be able to see it. It won't be very good because it's at night, of course, which is a bit of a shame. But here is the Savior 1, and uh, it's basically an empty crew cabin with a probe core on top. But we also have ladders down the side and a light. So that we will hopefully be able to spotlight on um, Jana's wreckage when uh, we get near. But this should be able to get us into orbit. So let's go in 3, 2, 1. Alright, that looks like a uh, second stage burnout, so let's get rid of that. Throw up and carry on. I'm just going to bring my Apple Apps up to meet the orbit of Jana's scrap. There we go. It looks like we're quite a bit ahead, which is a bit of a problem. Um, I do still need to fine tune my <laughs> orbital rendezvous skills, but uh, here we go. So we're going to try and keep burning this way and eventually go up and over uh, Jauna's orbit. Uh, we should be getting max efficiency at this altitude, right? Yeah. We're not losing out on anything. Okay. Come on, 86, 87. Okay, now we've got two vectors. Going to drop that down. Going to put that up to about 95. That should do. We've still got mm, an amount of fuel. <laughs> I don't know if that's going to be enough or not, but here we go. So, let's just time warp out of the atmosphere. There we go. Okay. Now, I'm going to do a node for this just to see what we can do. If I burn this way. Whoop. Well. The results of interesting things happening. Alright, I think I'm just going to try and enter orbit, and then we can just do like a slightly higher orbit, and hopefully um, Janet will be able to catch up. So let's just get to about 30, maybe 20 seconds away. There we go, go into orbit mode, make sure we're on target mode, because that'll really, it'll really screw you up if you're in the wrong mode. And burn. Our Apple is going away from us pretty quick, so let's actually <laughs> let ourselves get a bit closer. Lots of trial and error here. I haven't done this in a while. And the probe was different because it was a much, much steeper orbit. Okay, we should be able to get into orbit easily with this. Fump. Alright. 22, 36. Alright, I'm going to bring that up a little. Now, hopefully, after a few orbits, because my orbit is now higher than mostly higher than Jana's, she will catch up, and eventually I'll be able to drop down into a lower orbit. This is like, this takes a lot of time and a lot of patience, but it's fairly fuel efficient, and it's quite easy. If you're in front of the target, you go into a higher orbit so they can catch up. If you're uh, behind the target, you go into a lower orbit so that you can catch up with them. Fump. In fact, that's actually going to be uh, about 10 kilometers on the next orbit. So you can actually see that as we go through those, they will change. Um, this isn't really a rendezvous tutorial, it's more just sort of explaining what's going on for those of you who might not know. However, it's a fairly inclined 0.2, okay, 0.2 degrees difference between our orbital inclinations. But Jana is now catching up quite fast now. I just want to make sure... Yeah, I think that one's actually the target position, which means that she's actually going to be ahead of me. So I'm going to drop down into a lower orbit at this point. Like I said, I'm fudging this. It's This is all fudge, right? Oh, that's actually bringing that closer, which is good. 9.7, 9.6. And at which point we'll probably be able to brute force this. 
Alright, let's go back into this mode. Got our lighters already on. And we'll go into target mode and try and start lining up some stuff. Starting with the retrograde markers. I like to line up the retrograde marker with the pointing away from target marker. I don't know what it's actually called, but... Um, because that ensures that you're not going to crash into the target. Well, I probably want to be going a little bit faster towards it now, because I'm going to go at 10 meters per second, and I'm still quite far out. So we go this way, and your prograde marker will come towards you when you burn. There we go. So we're just going to drag it over there and line it up. Now, of course, if you have RCS, you can literally just point, and then you can, like, burn laterally to... Um, line up a little bit better, but we're just going to burn to forwards, and our separation now 7.4, and going down. So we're just going to basically rinse, lather, and repeat this a few times. So here's our close position, what, 6.9? Yep. And we're just going to repeat this a few times until we get a close encounter. And we don't have a huge amount of fuel, but I think we should be alright. So let's just do this again. Nine point eight kilometers. Hmm, this is annoying me. Come on, why am I not getting there quicker? All right, let's just screw it. Let's just point prograde. I'm hoping that we have fuel for this. We don't have a lot left. Oh wait, that's the wrong way. Ah, damn it. Okay, well I just wasted a whole lot of fuel. I want to be going this way. As I said, I haven't done this in a while. And we need to make sure that we keep some to slow down with again. Okay, that's 3.2 kilometers. That's much better. Okay, so now we can start lining things up properly. With our tiny little smidgen of fuel. So I'm actually going to thrust limit this. Oh, God. I hate working with low fuel reserves. Okay, burn this way. Move the retrograde marker away. The irony of this is I'm probably going to have enough fuel to get to Jauna, but I'm not going to have enough to deorbit again. 1.5 kilometers. Alright, that's enough for her to EVA. I'm not going to do any more than that. I was hoping to, like, pull right up to her, but I don't think we're going to have the fuel for that. So, let us point this way. Time warp around till we are closer, at least within physics range, which is about 2.2 kilometers. There we go. Just a little tiny bit of lag there. Go to about 20 seconds away from closest. Okay, here we go. So, let's just switch over to Jana's vessel. Where is it? Uh, Jana? I'm scrolling in and out. Oh! Oh, there we go. Okay, I was inside it. That was interesting. Right. EVA, please. And jump. And ask yes. Alright, so which way... No, I don't want to join a scrap. I want to set the, the rescue mission. Set as target. There we go. Okay, now we can see where it is. Which is... That way. Burn towards it. In fact, yeah, we can just see it glittering in the distance over there. So we're just going to... Line ourselves up. There we go. Now we're going towards it. Pretty quickly, actually. Okay, we're coming in. Let's just tunnel a little bit to get over there. It's actually fairly far out. Here it comes. Whee! Okay, let's make sure we slow down here. And just fly up a bit. Turn your headlights on. away from it. Come on. We're going towards it again? Yes, we are. Um, uh oh <laughs> I was trying to use a combination of, like, visuals and the nav ball, um, which I've not really done before, because I haven't really done a lot of EVA stuff with the net with the new... The, well, the fact that we now have a nav ball for the Kerbals. Come on. Come on. Come on. Just get some ladder. Come on. And grab. Yay! <laughs> okay. We have Jana on board.
Right, we have a smidgen of fuel left. We also have a decoupler though, so I'm gonna go... Our periaps is 84, and our periaps is 108. Damn, okay. There is no over overbirth effects to be gained here, so... We're going to... Actually, while we're here, we're just gonna... Uh, unset target. Okay, apparently you can't unset a target while you're time warping. And we're gonna go to... Apoaps over here. And if we really need, I suppose we can do the Kerbal on EVA uses jetpack trick. Okay, right at Apoaps. Point retrograde. Which way is that? That way. Make sure we're in orbit mode. Okay. And throttle up. How far can we drop our periaps? Oh no, that's alright actually. That's fine. I don't need to be worried at all. I won't bring it any lower than that, I don't think. Okay, but we are on our way back down with Jonah on board. Welcome to the crew, you know? <laughs> okay, and at that point I think of Davy Jones from Pirates of the Caribbean going, Welcome to the crew. Right. That was my really, really bad um, Davy Jones voice. Time warp. Let's do the time warp again. Oh, God. My sister has discovered the Rocky Horror um, picture show the other day and is now addicted. Hmm. Right. Let's get rid of the service stage. We don't need it anymore. You served us well. We used almost all your food. We have 0.5 <laughs> units of liquid fuel remaining. That's pretty intense. Okay. Bye-bye. Point back this way. Uh, I'll leave that light on just so that you can see where it is, because I've noticed that when I've been editing my videos, like I can only barely see this because it's quite dark. When I edit the videos, they come out even darker, and I don't know why that is. But we are going to. Is that heating up? Yes, it is. So we are going to be re entering now, so I'm just going to turn the SAF back off and let this thing stabilize and time warp until we get some fancy things happening. Alright, we're at safe parachute deployment altitude, so we're going to do that. And I'm going to have to do this quickly because I've just been informed that a uh, TV show that I like to watch is on uh, pretty much now. So I'm going to have to just quickly rush through the last of this, but that's alright. This is the last thing that we had going for this mission. So, parachute out. Lovely. We're going to be splashing down in the water. Time up down the rest of the way. Turn the SAS back on. Five, four, three, two, one. 9876543211987654321 and splash yay world first milestone we performed a crew transfer near Kerbin didn't actually realize that was a thing and recover the vessel and that should fully complete the contract let's have a look And the phone rings. Wonderful. Okay, let's see what we've done. One data gathered, yay. And funds recovered, and... Yay, Janica's actually leveled up, and she's now part of the crew roster! And we got 79,000 funds for that. Awesome, got 860,000 funds, 26 science, and next time we'll be doing some more contracts! But it's time for me to go, so until next time. Guys, thank you very much for watching. I've been ExcelMC131, and I'll see you next time. Hey guys, Axel here with a quick shout out to the creator of some absolutely awe-inspiring music, one Grace Wood. As her older cousin, I am incredibly proud of her for winning the Lion Foundation Songwriting Competition for 2015, as organised by the Play It Strange Trust. Her new song, Young, Naive and Reckless, is a fantastic example of her incredible talent, and I strongly suggest you head over to her newly founded YouTube channel, or her SoundCloud, and show Grace and her music some love. Trust me, you will not be disappointed. Point us apart